All right, welcome everybody. The Baseman build progresses. Um, so I first wanted to show you, I got the heaters wired up. Um, I kind of, usually you'll want to get this a little tighter, but I mismeasured. As long as you definitely keep the routing of that clear away. Clear, see how these are kind of routing away as me, immediately up, up and around. And the same with this, I come in from the bottom and then I immediately pull it around. So I'm trying to keep those heaters down to the bottom and away from the other pins anywhere. They'll add noise to the sound. I've also got it tightly wound. Then I'm bringing it up, and if you can barely see this, like right up in this edge here, and I might even put a small amount of some tape or something just to try and hold as far away from these output jacks as much as possible. Into the preamp uh, tubes as well, same way. So I got all the heater wires around, and I just wanted to tilt this way so that you can see that. Now I'm gonna tilt it back down this way, and you should be able to see um, I have also, so you can see the heater wires are in, as we just showed. I've wired in uh, the connections to my uh, rectifier tube. Uh, that comes over to here, and now I haven't wired this yet because the board will, that'll wire into my uh, A point of the board. I also have uh, extra wires. This is the, like a Faraday cage, so that'll just go to ground. This is the bias tap, and then this one will be the, um, this is the center tap of the, um, transformer. So this goes to um, the, I'll have to double check. I think this also goes to ground. But um, I also brought in my power. I grounded, I don't know if that's going to be visible, but in the bottom corner here, let me try and tilt this up. Right down here in the bottom corner, there is the, I've locked this in tightly. Sorry, we're getting a call on my wife's land there. Uh, we've locked this in here with the grounding. And then I put the white wire straight into the transformer. The black wire though comes in hooks to the fuse, to the power switch, and then goes the transformer. So our power switch will toggle that. Also that HT line that comes off of the, the um, rectifier comes into the second standby switch there. And like I said, that's the second half of that, but that won't, that'll connect into the board. These are the uh, one side of the, prime, the transformer, the output transformer. Two of these will go to the power tubes and the other one will go to power, runs the power into it. And then the other thing is this is the output side right here. These will be the um, to the ground two, four, and eight ohm taps right there. Now, the other thing I got done tonight as well was I drilled, sorry, I'm gonna block the camera for a minute there. If you can see here, that's all right, I, I got the, um, the main board here. I drilled holes in that and then put these locking kind of standoffs on them as well. And now what I can do is um, this guy will slot in here once I populate that board, it'll just drop right in there, and then I can just kind of run my connections, you know, from the different parts to all these different points. And I had to kind of try to find a spot that would fit best where I wasn't colliding with, uh, right here is the output transformer screw, so I had to kind of put these on the other side of it, either of these on the other side, so it kind of is over a little far. But that also means I'm kind of directly uh, closer to the power tubes for the stuff that goes on here that connects to that. So we've got the bias circuit here. And the power tubes up will come off of there as well. So, uh, you know, it, it works. I think it should be good. I mean, some people may like try to try and push this all the way over to this side. The problem I had with that now is that two of my bolts are right in the middle of the output transformer. They wouldn't have fit. So I figure this works just fine for me and it gets closer. Sorry for that screeching and scraping of screws. But as I said, once I finish populating the board, I'll drop it in, lock it in, and then I will uh, connect just the wires between these different things. But uh, as uh, many people have shown me in the forums and, uh, you know, from other people's builds I've seen as they took photos, they definitely got these heater wires done first, all this kind of wiring done first, so that then they can just drop in the board and attach it and they're done. All right, everybody, hopefully you can see this. I do have the board done now, and of course I base it off of this guy. Came from Hop, uh, Doug Hoffman's website. It's great stuff, love it, because I can just go through and look and measure it all. So you've seen me do this before. I created my own layouts on the previous amps, had bugs in them. Doug's spent a lot of time making these pretty much perfect. This one's done now, I'm gonna solder it up uh, with all the ground connections. Uh, there is one more thing I'm gonna have to do still. I'm gonna do an underboard jumper here that I will put uh, as well in there. And the, one of the tricks that I have uh, been taught about that that's kind of cool, I won't uh, show it exactly here, is that you, you push a wire up through on any underboard jumper. Uh, in theory, I'm not gonna use this because I will have a sheathed wire. You don't want it to be potentially grounding, so you only have enough of it to come through. But you push it through the hole at the bottom, instead of just pushing it slightly through. I can't see that. Anyway, when it comes out this side, you actually bend it over the top of the turret and you just kind of get a slight bend in it that will keep it from falling out. Even when you start heating it up to solder some of the other parts in it, it can't accidentally wiggle its way back out because of that. I think it was uh, Slucky from the forums that gave me that one. Uh, so I will show that to you when I'm done with that as well. So I'll give you that in a little bit. Okay, I'm a bit behind the camera here, but I'm gonna try and point this out with a, a red wire. 
what I've done here is I have now, um, if you can see right here, there is the little wire sticking out just right there and fold it over. Now, I'm not sure if this is in frame, but it comes out. Yes, it is over here. And you can see it bending out as well. So what I'll then do is flip this over really quickly and you'll see the wire on the back side. I haven't soldered it yet, but you'll be able to see the wire on the back side as well. I'm sorry, I'm banging the tripod stand around a little bit. Let me just swing the adjust the, to that side. So there you see it, that one was there, but it won't fall out now. And even if I solder it and resolder it, that's gonna stay in because those little wires bent over it. So there you have it, all done, good to go. And uh, that jumper's that section together. And that's the only jumper wire on the bottom side. So I'm ready to start uh, soldering that together. Once I've done soldering that, I'll do another quick video. All right, there we have her. She's all done, soldered up. Next step's gonna be to start putting all the components on the board and uh, and then we'll drop her into the chassis, which of course is up here. I will give another shot of that, which we last saw the other side of the night, but uh, let me adjust. And that's right there. So we're getting closer. Okay, everybody. So one of the things I've talked about before, but I realize I've got a nice macro lens. Hopefully this will make it a little easier to see what I'm talking about. If you're trying to test continuity, remember if I've just tapped these together, that means I have continuity, which makes sense. Uh, and most meters should have a little continuity mode on them. If I just were to go to this turret and this turret, that does say I've got continuity, right? But you sometimes don't get good connections, etc. One of the best ways I find is to prove the continuity is not only at these turrets, but is going through them, is to choose up on the leg of something like this resistor all the way across multiples and then come up to say this leg. So I'm getting resistant or I'm getting continuity by testing it that way. Now you can also just check each leg. So kind of hold one of the things I'm getting, the reason I'm beeping is I'm not putting enough pressure. You want to have a good con uh, connection. See how that sounds nice and clean when I get good connections. Um, you can check other legs along the line. Since the resistor is, uh, resistance is in between here and here, I wouldn't get any here, but I get it as soon as I touch these sides, right? Similar to this bottom here, this is going to be a grounding line. I just put, touch one of these here and touch here. That way I can check to make sure that each of those is getting good continuity. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reframe again in a minute and give you a show of also what I usually do for resistors to show that not only is the resistance there, but also that I have good continuity between, those, between them as well, but I won't be in frame unless I readjust, so we'll be back in just a second. All right, so now you should be able to see my you know re resistance here. If I'm looking, this is um, this one, according to our little drawing here, is a 10K resistor. Rather than just testing here and saying, oh yeah, I've got 10K or whatever, um, I can actually test kind of down the line a little bit. And there I have 9.88K, very close to 10K with intolerances. That proves to you that not only do I have 10K, but I have it through that, like I'm actually getting good continuity again and getting resistance. Similarly, I could test on this side of this one here, and then also come over here somewhere as well. And I should add the two resistors together because they're in series, if I can get that on. Although now my hand is blocking, sorry. Uh, so now we can see it's 14K because this is a 4.7-ish K, I think, and then, and then the, 10, the 10K. So the, oh, those two add up. Similarly, these larger ones are 470 ohm. You could just keep doing the math and adding them up, and they should keep adding up. That's a good way to do some of these tests and make sure that your resistors are good. Of course, I also want to test from here to here. Uh, but instead of just trying the turret to turret, I do need to get this a good turret, but I could come over here uh, or here. There we go, 100K. So you can see that's, not only do you want to do some double checking, make sure everything looks right, but you want to make sure that you can sense really good continuity going all the way across multiple parts of these lines of the bus to make sure that you haven't got any kind of dry soldered connections or anything kind of funky. Now, the other thing that is obvious as well is that, look, I've gotten the entire board finished tonight. So that's uh, pretty good news. This will now be uh, ready for me to drop it in and start putting the rest of the uh, of this uh, fender base uh, I want to say base master, but that's not right. It's the uh, base man. Base man. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, son. Wow, it's been a long day today. Um. So anyway, the the base man's come along well, and in hopefully in a couple days to maybe at most a week, I will have this all put together and we'll be playing some sound out of it. Now, one of the thing I wanted to mention before I forget about it is the base man uses uh, RCA jacks to connect to the speakers, and I've got this up to set. I think I've mentioned that. But for my actual trial, I only have regular speaker hookups right now. I've got myself, and I have a, oops, I dropped it. I have a spare regular speaker jack that I'll hook up to it as well temporarily to my 8 ohm tap so I can plug into my 8 ohm dummy load and my 8 ohm uh, speakers so that I can just make sure it's working. So, any rate, we're getting there, we're getting closer. Uh, thanks everybody for watching, and we'll keep you updated as we go.
keep your tubes biased hot and they keep the jams coming. <laughs>